department to meet costume designer Jane Stewart Brown, who's going to tell me a bit about the original size zero. My challenge is to strap on a whalebone corset from the 1850s. Millions of British women were in the grip of a fashion craze that could be quite literally lethal. And I'm strapping up for two whole days. Wow. Do you reckon I could have a go at wearing one? Definitely. But I have to ask you a few health questions before we go ahead. Okay. Are you generally healthy? Yep. No uh, persistent cough? No. Nope. Broken ribs? No. Nope. Or any sort of car accidents recently? No, no, no. OK, well, I think you tick all the boxes. Let's have a go. So you've got a small little waist of 26 and a half, 26 and which half. gives us a centimetre measurement of 60 centimetres. OK. Um, and my lung capacity will go down a lot as well. It will. So it just so happens that I have got two pink balloons on me and I'm going to blow one up now to see what my lung capacity is and then afterwards we'll see how much it's diminished when I'm in my corset. So here goes. <gasps> right, that is my current lung capacity. There we go. It looks like some sort of weird torture device, doesn't it? Well, that's how it'll feel when it's on. Can I just say, it already feels quite tight and you haven't done the back up yet. Yeah. So, let the big squeeze begin. Ooh, how am I going to eat my lunch? Well, a word of advice, although it may feel the wrong thing to do, is keep your corset on at all times because your body will start to make allowances for this new shape. Let's have a look. Mm. Wow, so you've gone down to an amazing 23 and a half inches. So in fact, you've lost three inches. Whoa. Okay, it's time to blow up the balloon to see my new lung capacity. Here goes. <sighs> Welcome to my new reduced lung capacity. That's my old lung capacity. And I've got 48 hours with this one. Let's see how I do. Right, now I have my more than perfect waist. But how will I manage to wear this thing through my normal working week? Do you know what? Bending down is a nightmare because I can't bend properly and that is just digging in. Ah, I can see that I'm going to get back in quite quickly. Just a second. Professor Stephen King at the Wellcome Collection is an expert on the medical oh, effects of corsets. <laughs> He's going to monitor my health while I'm encased in this thing. This should work, yeah. If we take your pulse rate, if you look at that, then you see a normal pulse rate, 60 to 80. Yours is almost 100 with almost no exercise. And that can lead to heart attacks and strokes and did in the past quite regularly. I can believe it. I feel like I might have a stroke right now, so should we sit back down? Indeed. OK. Just look at that waist. I can't even slouch on the sofa, because that's my side view. Even though I've had the course off for about half an hour, there's still, like, marks and ridges in my body from where it's been digging in. I mean, I don't know if you can see that there, but that's just from where it's been chafing me all day. As always, women have to suffer. It's an age-old thing. We suffer for our beauty. Painful. And you can watch the second part of Connie's corset challenge tomorrow. Right, who do you think knows more about corsets? Is it Dan Snow? Is it Vanessa Feltz? Vanessa, corsets. Yes, well, I've often worn one. And you see, Connie's very, very slim. She doesn't have the problem that most normal women have, that when they pull you in, all your fat bits have got to go somewhere. So where are they going to go? Oh, well, out. under your <laughs> chin. They get pushed up right under your chin and, and kind of down onto your thighs. I'd so like to say that. It's not good. <laughs> it's not at all a good look. And, and, you know, she had trouble bending down. You can't actually breathe. Yeah. Sit down. So you're OK as long as you don't need to do anything at all except look exquisite on the set of a costume drama. If you have to breathe, it's not good. But of course, it's not just women. Men have tried to get themselves into corsets over the years. Hard to believe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, that was one of the most enjoyable moments of my television career. But anyway, press on. Dan, corsets. 
Um, hang on, I'm just recovering. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> corsets, yeah. Um, the weird thing, actually, I bet you didn't know this about corsets, is actually that we have evidence in cave paintings that goes, they go back to the Stone Age. But I think this is a really good example of... You know, society changes so much, but we don't. You know, the animals, our brains, we don't change at all. So for, for as long as there have been human beings, we've wanted to use corsets to support our body weight when we're doing athletic stuff. And there's, there's examples of women using corsets in ancient civilizations, like the Roman, Roman civilization, um, when you're doing athletic stuff. Uh, and of course, also to look good, to look suave and, and carry yourself well. So it's often been a sign of an elite. Okay, but this size zero nonsense has been about for a hundred years. It's a nightmare, briefly, isn't it, Vanessa? Well, absolutely. I mean, it says that women look a certain way and are capable of weighing and, and being a certain circumference. Well, they we're not. The only way of doing it is by doing a Scarlett O'Hara hanging onto the bedpost yeah. while somebody pulls as hard as they can and tugs away at your internal organs, <laughs> which isn't going to be comfortable. It's a lovely thought to take for the rest of the <laughs> evening. <laughs> Vanessa, we love having you on. Dan, as always, me. thanks very Thank much. So That's much. it for tonight. Tomorrow we're with the QE2 as she sets sail on a final voyage. Plus cats, are they just evil?